If you have been accused of domestic violence, you got arrested, you have a court date coming up, and you're actually innocent, like you really didn't do anything wrong, or you just acted in self-defense, or the police just came out and they arrested you without getting your side of the story, this video is for you because I am tired of seeing the system railroad people who are innocent, who don't take the steps to protect themselves because they're innocent, because they have faith in the system and they think that the truth will set them free without them really doing much. My name is Veronica. I'm a domestic violence defense attorney here in California, and I help people put their cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. I'm also the creator of a course called Defeat the DVRO in which I teach you from start to finish everything that you need to know to represent yourself at a domestic violence restraining order hearing and win. So sometimes when you get arrested, you get out, you've been falsely accused. The next thing that's going to happen is that the other side files a restraining order against you. If that happens, my course is for you. You can get your free first class via the link down below. By the way, hello from beautiful San Diego. I know you can see the reflection of my ring light. You can see the reflection of the bed in my hotel room. My firm takes cases from Eureka all the way down to San Diego. So yes, we really can take your case throughout the entire state of California. Give us a call, we are here, and I can be there. Okay, so let's jump right in. If you are innocent, the things that might screw you over in the criminal justice system. Number one is you might make statements to the police. Now, I think we all know just from watching Law & Order or if you've started to watch YouTube videos here, you know, okay, you're not supposed to talk to the police, but you might think, Yes, but I didn't do anything wrong. That's for guilty people. That's not true. It's not just for guilty people. The reason is that if you make a statement, it can be misconstrued and it will be misconstrued because believe me, if you have been arrested, whatever's in that police report, whatever the police are saying that you said, however the DA is going to manipulate what you said is not going to be in your favor, right? They're going to take whatever you said and maybe you were holding off the other person because they were trying to attack you. Oh, he admitted that he grabbed her by the shoulders, right? They are going to take whatever you said and make it sound as bad as possible, spin it in the worst possible light. Why? It's nothing personal. It's because it's their job, right? That's the job of the police when they've arrested someone to justify the arrest. It's the job of the DA when they file charges against you to make you sound guilty. They take the police report, they spin it in the worst possible way for you, and your defense attorney's job is to spin the police report in the best possible way for you. And then it's all supposed to balance out. So the DA could be looking at this police report and thinking, I'm not sure about this. They might not feel that strongly about the case. It doesn't really matter because their job is to take whatever's in there, take whatever body worn video there is of any statements that you made and make them sound as bad as possible. It's literally their job. And for them, how they can sleep at night is thinking, okay, well, it's the job of the defense to poke holes in that, to show that it, it wasn't that bad. And so when you are innocent and you make these statements to police, you know, and sometimes it's it's actually after you got arrested. Sometimes you'll actually get a call from a detective after, or even the the alleged victim in a domestic violence case will get a call after the arrest has already taken place. Maybe they have bailed you out of jail, and they will think, you know what, I'm just going to talk, and they will make statements, and they'll talk about how they want charges to be dropped against you. And you may be thinking, well, that's really helpful and the truth will set me free. But instead, what the detective is thinking and what they are using these statements for is probably to show, well, maybe the defendant is the person who was arrested, you, is pushing this person to drop the case, is trying to coerce them, is forcing them to drop it because their story has really changed here. And why else would that have happened? And look, I primarily handle domestic violence cases now, but I used to handle murder cases attempted murder cases, you know, all the way to jury trial, gang cases, all those kinds of cases. Guilty people, like career criminals, gang members, they know, they're not saying anything. But innocent people, people who think, you know what, if I were to just tell my side of the story, those are the people who end up getting screwed over. And look, you don't, you don't know the law, right? Like what goes into self-defense? One of the big issues with self-defense in domestic violence cases, for example, is excessive force. So if you were just defending yourself, did you defend yourself too much? Did you go one step beyond? Could you have done something less than you did? And when you were describing what you did and you're like, well, I was just holding them off or, you know, I pushed them away because they were trying to reference a real case I had where we won at trial, but it was 
very difficult and very contentious, yet the other side was trying to stab me with a pair of basically like cuticle scissors. You know, what can you do if someone is trying to stab you with a pair of cuticle scissors? Can you stab them with a knife? Can you choke them? Can you push them away? Can you push them to the ground? You know, there is no hard and fast law on that. And what your defense attorney would have to look to at trial is, okay, well, in light of all of the circumstances here, what would be a reasonable amount of force and what would be excessive? And they have to argue that whatever you did was not excessive. But for you to give this sound bite to the prosecution early on, when you don't have to, and if you're already arrested or being arrested, it is not going to do you any good. The police officer says, hey, I'm on your side, dude. Like, I, I understand, you know, women can be crazy. This is something they say. I'm not saying this and I'm not saying that all women are victims and that all people arrested for domestic violence are men. It's not true. If they say, yeah, I know women can be crazy. I've had a girl like that before. Things that they actually say, you know, if I were in your position, I would have choked her too. You choked her, didn't you? Just just tell me the truth and we can get this done with. We can get you out of here. They can say that with no intention of getting you out of there. You're still going to have to bail out. And all that will happen is now they have more evidence against you. Number two, when people are innocent, a lot of times they think, and I think it's more when they have like a family member or friend that has been involved in the criminal justice system, maybe especially even more if that person happens to be a police officer that thinks that they know more than they do. One of the things that people will do is not get an attorney before court because it is true that the prosecution might not file charges against you. You might show up at court without having an attorney to hear no charges have been filed against you, which is great. However, you may also show up and find out that felony charges have been filed against you or misdemeanor charges have been filed against you. If you get an attorney before court who is proactive, who gives you instructions on what to do, who contacts the prosecution before court, then you increase your likelihood of being in that pile of cases that do not get filed. It drives me crazy when people have family members who are in law enforcement and they they say well we see a lot of these that don't end up getting filed you know what save your money okay well if you're if charges already filed against you and you contact a lawyer you're probably going to pay a lot more than you would if you contact them before court and they know that they have a chance to get charges dropped before court the reason is that if charges are already filed against you it is going to be so much more difficult to get them dropped so if you are trying to figure out what is a good way to save money it probably is not to just take your chances and so if you just wait to see if charges are filed without having an attorney contact the prosecution to tell the prosecution your side of the story for example through the lens of a criminal defense attorney not through you when you're on the spot when you're scared and you're in jail and you don't know the law and you're just doing your best telling them your side of the story through the lens of here's what self-defense would be, here is what accident would be, here's, you know, whatever defense may apply to you. So the prosecution actually does care about how you are as a citizen. Are you somebody who is a normal, hardworking person, who has a job, who went to college or wants to go to college or trade school or join a profession or like any of that, any of those good things about you, they want to hear that you are a normal, upstanding citizen of society. But where they will not find that out is in the police report. So if you do not have an attorney, contact the police before court. Then the prosecution will only see whatever's in the police report, which is not going to look good for you especially if you got arrested for a felony for 273.5a, it's going to look bad for you because they're justifying this is a potential felon. We set bail pretty high for this person. We took them into custody because we thought that they were so dangerous. It's not going to look good and they're not going to hear about whatever's on your resume, any of the you know character letters from family friends. That is something that I always submit for my clients before court whenever possible. They're not going to hear about your volunteer work. How about a statement from the alleged victim who maybe is on your side? They're not going to hear that either. And so one of the big mistakes that you can make when you are an innocent person is not being proactive because you believe eventually the truth will set you free. You have faith in the system. I hope you found this video helpful. If you do have a case anywhere in the state of California, feel free to give me a call. You can also find my number down below. And if you did find it helpful, please don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook.